How do you figure the true value of gold if the true amount of debt is unknown? For example, the foreign exchange derivatives, unknown or estimated total. Right, exactly. You know, you really can't know the exact fundamental value. We just use the data that we do have to make a guesstimate of how much that is. Right, so you use the global debt clock right? Yes, to do your I calculations? Mean, I have gone in and pulled everything, you know, piecemeal. It takes an awful lot of time. And quite honestly, I don't think that it's that critically important that we know that exact number. So yes, I use just the global debt clock just to make my life easy and to do a quick calculation. And then um, additionally, you want to know how much gold there is in the world. So you can do it either what's been already mined since it's all recoverable, 98% of it's recoverable, or the Department of the Interior does an annual global survey of how much gold is in ground yet, they anticipate. The number that you use though is from the, it's from the World Gold Council, I think, is that right? On the amount the total of, amount of total like 205,000 tons of gold or 30, I forget how many ounces that it, works out to be. It, it, it could, it could be. When I was doing that on a regular basis, I actually would pull the data from the uh, Department of Interior because I felt like they talked more about the in-ground gold as well. Mm -hmm. So what is likely to come out of the ground, uh, even when they talk about like fines, like there was a recent find in, I can't remember where. Uh, but it was a substantial amount, but the Department of the Interior had likely already anticipated that amount in the find. So you get it a little bit more accurate, if, and that's easy, and it's easy data to pull. If it was right. super complicated data to pull, then frankly, at this juncture, I'm going to the easiest way at the moment. Right. But, um, right. And regardless, the way that you do it, it shows that gold is true fundamental value right now, it is probably underestimated, right? Oh, 100%. So and I think it's somewhere exactly. around $13,000 an ounce. So it shows you the, the, the real big difference between what the spot price is now around 1800 and the fundamental value of gold conservatively being around 13000 Yeah, or more. Yeah. And uh, likely more. I think that's definitely an underestimation if they were to do right. that reset. Yeah, and Overnight answering reset. almost answering Jackie D's question, right? That even though we don't know what foreign exchange derivative is and the true amount of debt, so the well, number that we use is even smaller, smaller than what right. And you know, you're talking about the foreign exchange derivatives because I just did that piece from the biz, right? But the reality is, is that everybody admits when you go to derivatives that nobody knows the true value at risk because they have made them so incredibly complex with all of these formulas that even the guys that manage this stuff, even above that, the biz, the IMF, the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, every, the World Bank, every single agency admits that they have no idea of the true value at risk. So, yeah. All right, so Memo K asks, with the possibility of a gold confiscation by the government, do you believe the pre-1933 gold could be changed to a later cutoff year for consideration to not be confiscated, i.e. pre-1980? Can I, can I answer this one? Please. Um, so, the, it's not about the date range that we look at when we say, okay, what do we consider to be protected or possibly safe from a confiscation? We look at what was the language in the last executive order, which was uh, rare or unusual with special value to collectors. So it's not the pre-1933 gold per se is non-confiscatable. We look at the language. So it could be that there are coins that are modern minted that are super rare that maybe would be our, our special value to collectors that maybe would not fit be into that category. yeah that would fit into that category but pre-1933 u.s gold we do know um not all of it is uh rare or unusual with special value to collectors there's plenty of raw or jewelry grade 
you know, $20 gold coins that aren't necessarily rare or unusual. Um, and that's, that's primarily why I think both of us have stuff that is, you know, rarer, graded oh, 100%. Type, types of gold. However, let me just say that there is anything pre-33, there's a finite amount of it. Correct. Right? And so, you know, you cannot, what, what I look at, honestly, is can I hold it inside of an IRA? And if I cannot hold it inside of an IRA, so even those pre-33 Raws, you can't hold them inside of an IRA. Why not? The, the gold content is all standardized, is the same today as it was back then. So there is a reason why they give it that classification. So for me, that's what I look at. What can I hold in my IRA? If I can hold it in my IRA, then that's not the kind of gold I want because I want that classification that I cannot hold it in an IRA. And I think this is important because, you know, Lynette and I have two different viewpoints on this. So yeah, it shows that fine. shows that, you know, nobody knows for sure. I mean, right. we are experts. We've been in this industry for years and years and years. Two yeah. decades, right? Of 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 two yeah. decades of experience. For, well, and 16 Actually, years, more. 16 years for me and 20, 20 years for you just in gold. Well, more than that. That's, that's here at ITM. Right, that's at ITM. But remember back in 1964 with my uncle. Yes. And his, he didn't, none of his coins were slabbed. And yet they were all legal for him to hold and own and critically use in the normal marketplace. Right. So speculative right nobody knows for sure lynette ha goes by you know what can not what can she hold inside of an ira i don't want that for me right. i look at it at from the perspective of what was the language in the last confiscation that was rare and unusual special value to collectors so i generally use that as a guiding principle for okay what type of gold do i want to own that i think will be most likely safe if there is to ever be another gold confiscation right. so it's so, what if I'm right, what if I'm wrong? If you could do something, it doesn't matter. Pay right. the little bit of premium and go in that. That's the direction I go in. So hopefully that answers your question. There could be stuff that's, you know, not, that's newer than pre-1933 that could be considered rare or unusual. Right. And also not kept in an IRA. Right. Um, but I would urge you to be careful when looking at that stuff to make sure that it is actually rare and unusual because there's a lot of there's a lot of companies that will promote stuff as commemorative or right. you know special value but it's just bullion that's been minted from for that particular company and it's and not really slapped. rare and unusual and it's nothing special about it it's right. just a bullion coin right and then slab there are some companies that will grade that Right. And give it a special designation, but that doesn't make it so. Right. Right. So you do have to be careful. Okay. So Gary K asks, in the end of hyperinflation, if the end of hyperinflation results in a dollar with zero value, how will physical assets, stocks, real estate, and precious metals be valued? Well, they're going to be valued in terms of the local currency or perhaps the global currency. So let's just stay local for a minute. Until we reset into um, a new currency, they're going to be valued in terms of dollars. The problem is, is if you can only convert that asset into dollars and the dollars have zero value, what do you really have? You have that nominal confusion. So the difference between, say, stocks, um, real estate is a little bit different because it kind of straddles both ends, except in terms of real estate that has been turned into a financial product, you can only convert that into the currencies, whereas, you know, physical metals, so silver, gold, is used in every single um, area of the global economy. 
So no matter where you are, it's going to be valued in terms of local. So I wouldn't like put it into the local currency to capture nominal gains on it, but I would put it into the local currency in order to pay off a mortgage or pay off pay off something. Or buy something. Or buy something. Buy. Correct. That that I can't do direct. But that's that's really the difference. Physical assets, stocks are not really a physical asset, even though they they their perception is is that it represents something, but you can't go to that company and pull a brick. Oh, that's my brick or that's my piece of equipment. You know, you can't. You can only convert that into dollars. Real estate straddles both because you got to have a place to live. But if it's it has been turned into a financial product and that's what's going to be burned off right now. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I think the important thing, Gary, is to understand that hyperinflation results in a dollar with zero value. Well, it has value. It's just it constantly is getting eroded and it takes more and more dollars to buy that. So anything is still going to be valued in whatever those dollars are. It's just going to take a lot more of those dollars to buy it. And gold and silver hold up and hold their value through that hyperinflation. And you can convert those, those gold, that gold and silver into more and more dollars as that trend continues, which then you use to go buy other assets like stocks and bonds because people will still be taking those dollars even though the value keeps being eroded. Yeah, they'll, they'll be forced mm -hmm. because that's legal tender laws, right? So they have to continue to take the dollars. And we've seen it, but they'd prefer to take gold and silver and right. not, not dollars. 